Welcome to Esports in a Nutshell Weekly. Having fun with the world of esports one week at a time. I'm your host, Mark Register. We have a wonderful show for you with this week's top stories, drama between CSGO Diamonds and Mo, and EA's esports game plan. We hit every esports news story of the week, answer the big questions of the week, give a play-by-play of the EU LCS summer split match between Fnatic and Unicorns of Love, and show highlights from Overwatch, Dota, Hearthstone, Counter-Strike, and Mortal Kombat with the musical backing of Brian DiBiagio. Now, for this week's top stories, Will Green at Esports Betting Report reports the Counter-Strike gambling site CSGO Diamonds provides player-turned-turner E-League caster and Echo Fox co-owner Muhammad Assad, a.k.a. Mo, with the outcomes of virtual roles so he can win on camera. CSGO Diamonds allows customers to sell their Counter-Strike skins for their uh, virtual currency called Diamonds, then wager the Diamonds on variable odds outcomes based on dice rolling. Customers can then use the Diamonds to buy skins on the site marketplace. CSGO Diamonds and Muhammad Assad partner up in an agreement where Mo would broadcast himself playing on their site for a minimum of 110 hours a month for 10% of the site's profits with the free diamonds uh, provided by CSGO Diamonds to play with, but he can't withdraw them for cash. In order to increase the entertainment value of the streams and get more attention, the site gives Mo the roll numbers ahead of time so he can win on camera. This goes on for a while, and he accrues $26,000 worth of diamonds with this setup. After a while, Moe's casting time drops below the minimum agreed upon 110 hours per month in their contract. They reach out offering a renegotiation or severance payment to end the sponsorship, but Mo wants more. He wants to cash out the $26,000 in diamonds he made from their rigged system and keep the 10% of the site's profits. Mo tweets out, quote, So I had $26,000 uh, in diamonds on that site, and I tried to withdraw, and they telling me I can't. CSGO Diamonds, you have 24 hours before exposed. CSGO Diamonds, terminates the sponsorship and in a twit longer explains their side of the story and said they made a mistake in providing Muhammad Assad with advanced knowledge of game outcomes in order to make the streams more entertaining, but they learned their lesson. Will Green points to a study from Neris Advisors and Eilers and Krejic Gaming that says the skins gaming market in 2016 will have a total of 7.4 billion dollars in transactions. Parish Dave from the LA Times reports Electronic Arts announces they will set aside one million dollars over the next year in prize pools for Madden 17 tournaments with a three-year plan to build challenger, premier, and major level tournaments. Part of this plan includes providing scheduling software for college students and amateurs to organize their own tournaments. EA will work with tournament organizers like ESL and Gfinity, have their own EA major tournaments, and run a charity initiative called Play to Give, donating $1 million to charity at the end of the week. In last month's investor presentation, EA made it clear esports will not be a significant source of revenue for EA in the near term. EA also announces EA Originals, essentially their indie label to help fund small developers starting with the release of their first game, Fae, from the developer Zoink. And now, here's the rapid-fire rundown of everything that's happening in esports to give you a table of contents if you're feeling scholarly or just the cliff notes. Cloud9 shuts down their Heroes of the Storm division. The latest Overwatch patch nerfs McCree's bullets from 70 damage to 45. Splice launches their Overwatch division, signing team, Fine, I'll go McCree. DC Comics' fighting game sequel, Injustice 2, is shown off in their new awesome trailer. Xbox announces Xbox Arena, where people can sign up, compete, and watch tournaments. 
OG wins Valve's Dota Manila Major at $1.1 million. Liquid goes home with a meager $405,000. Parish Dave makes a list of the top esports franchises. You can take a look at some of that over here. Esports Observer appoints Chris Hanna as their new CEO and gives us a peek at their new analytics page. Pretty cool. Lupe Fiasco hints at competing against Zero in Smash 4 using Street Fighter V character Ryu at Evo in July. In Korean PC bangs, League of Legends takes up 29% of all hours played and Overwatch gobbles up 24%. ESPN2 will air the finale of Electronic Arts Madden NFL Championship June 14th, which boasts a $50,000 prize pool. Gamers acquires Esportspedia and relaunches the site as Esports Wikis, and dramatic rumors continue to surround Azubu. ESL announces their Overwatch Atlantic Showdown tournament with a $1 million prize pool to take place August 20th and 21st at Gamescom. Ice Frog continues to orchestrate his organized chaotic masterpiece in Dota, patch 6.88 with 126 changes to heroes, abilities, and items. Oh my. Team Secret and Evil Geniuses don't make the cut for the International 6 invite, which is at $11.5 million for the prize pool and counting. Evil Geniuses won the tournament last year winning $6.6 million. A Danish man scams two buyers of Counter-Strike skins for around $750, which he is forced to repay the men he scammed, do 40 hours of community service, and go to jail for 30 days for his crimes. Last month, Australian physicists set up an AI machine that recreates Nobel-winning physics experiment, the creation of a Bose-Einstein condensate, which is gas cooled down to one microkelvin, a millionth of a degree above absolute zero, from scratch in under an hour. Jinx Esports TV joins the Sky platform June 23rd while giving Sky and ITV minority stakes in the business to support the channel's growth. Content will include major tournaments, independent programming, and content partnership deals with Riot, Activision, EGL, and Gfinity. Football club Manchester United makes an offer for a European Overwatch team. Fnatic makes a counteroffer. Manchester makes another counteroffer. And given Fnatic is worth $42 million and Manchester United is worth $3.3 billion, Fnatic only stands to inflate the sale for Manchester United. Good news for the Overwatch team being sold. Team YP acquires an all-woman League of Legends team with the announcement they say, quote, the uphill battle that women face in the industry is still a reality. Being a woman in this cutthroat business means you need incredibly thick skin and strength on of character on top of admirable skill and talent, end quote. Pornography, helping women in that uphill battle of equality one click at a time. Atlantic City's Revel Casino opens their esports lounge, even though they are still waiting for their final certification for esports betting from the New Jersey Division of Gaming Enforcement. The Revel Hotel Casino was built in 2012 for $2.4 billion, went bankrupt. Then Glenn Straub bought it up in 2014 for $82 million, which is 3.4% of the original cost two years prior. He also is planning to spend $500 million in revitalizing the tanking city. After an 11-year break between titles, Quake Champions is announced and hopes to regain a seat in the esports table as it is one of the founding games of esports. Fun fact, in 1997, John Carmack, co-founder of ID Software, put up his Ferrari 328 for Quake's Red Annihilation tournament. Dennis Fong, won the prize. And suggestion, try a 2v2 or 3v3 format for a refreshing change. Blizzard explains if you are a lever, aka your percentage of quitting before a game is over, is above a certain threshold, you will get a 75% reduction in experience gain until you remedy the situation. If you don't shape up after that, they will stick a bar of lever in your mouth until you learn your lesson. And if it happens enough times, you may even go blind. 
from lever poisoning. In the last 10 months on Twitch, esports tournaments and their rebroadcasts have totaled 803 million hours of watch time. Of that, 573 million hours have been from the original broadcasts. From that pie, Riot has claimed 106 million hours of watch time. ESL claims 130 million hours of watch time, while 283 million hours are split up between DreamHack, Valve, Starladder, MLG, Beyond the Summit, and other. Gamer Sensei uh, gets a seed investment led by Boston Seed Capital and Accomplice for $2.3 million. Gamer Sensei is an algorithm-based platform that matches players with senseis or coaches for training. The company has a partnership with NRG Esports Organization as well. In the gold rush, the people who struck it rich for the long haul were the businesses that sold tools and services to the prospectors mining for gold. But that can be expensive. So if you can't afford the whole sensei thing, I'll give you the two most important sensei lessons. One, never put passion in front of principle. Even if you win, you'll lose. Two, lesson not just esports only. Lesson for whole life, whole life, have a balance. Everything be better. Each week, some questions rise up around the esports industry, and each week, I like to swat them right back down to the ground where they belong. Will Green at Esports Betting Report reports Counter-Strike gambling site CSGO Diamonds provides player turn turner E-League caster and Echo Fox co-owner Mohamed Assad, a.k.a. Mo, with the outcomes of virtual roles so he can win on camera. What really happened in this messy situation? Mohamed Assad Mo is no stranger to controversy, as Reddit can confirm he has been accused of cheating in Counter-Strike before. To be fair, the current industry is a game itself outside of the literal game. Mo and CSGO Diamonds went full force into the gray area, which is a natural thing to do with new industries, and they hit the border of no-no. Both parties are consenting adults who signed up for shady dealings, and that's okay. They knew what they were getting into. When Mo wasn't holding up his side of the written contract, he was offered severance and a goodbye. Instead, he wanted the $26,000 he won from the fixed outcomes with digital currency that he was told he couldn't redeem in the first place. So he threatens and follows through with exposing CSGO diamonds for wrongdoing, but ended up throwing himself under the same bus. If either wants a chance at redemption, they both need to publicly express regret and understanding that what they did was wrong and why better than they have so far. But what's most likely going to happen? What's done is done. They'll get a slap on the wrist and keep on with business as usual. Gamers acquires Esportspedia and relaunches the site as Esports Wikis and dramatic rumors continue to surround Azubu. So what's up with Azubu? Azubu is a company that is a direct competitor to Twitch that in 2014 took $34 million in equity funding and then $59 million in debt financing at the end of 2015. Most likely, they're starting to see the end of their financial runway. Although they have a great product, they aren't bringing in the revenue to be self-sustaining. So either they will have to cut back their overhead significantly, which is part of what we saw with Esportspedia get more money uh, from their money buddies or sell to another company for a fraction of what was invested in the company and scrap most of it except the parts seen useful to the buyer. Australian physicists set up an AI machine that recreates Nobel-winning physics experiment, the creation of a Bose-Einstein condensate, which is gas cooled down to one microkelvin, a millionth of a degree above absolute zero, from scratch in under an hour. When will AI be able to learn how to play esports games and school all of us? Five years. 
In the last few months, Google DeepMind beats the top Go board game player in the world and learns curiosity and reward to complete the video game uh, Mont- Montezuma's Revenge. There are more variables in esports titles than most of the simple games being played right now by DeepMind. Hearthstone could be the lowest hanging fruit and could be mastered in a year or two if focused on today, giving you plug in all the cards, abilities, and run the scenarios so that it can learn. A MOBA game like League of Legends will take much longer. There are so many variables that in order to run enough scenarios to effectively learn how to play and win, we would need to figure out a different approach or wait until quantum computing comes to fruition and bada bing. It would take a second to master not only any MOBA eSport, but pretty much anything in the world. Splice starts an Overwatch division. Football club Manchester United bids bids on an Overwatch team. Overwatch announces their $1 million prize pool tournament. Overwatch Atlantic Showdown tournament. And Cloud9 shuts down their Heroes of the Storm division. Is it safe to say Overwatch is taking off and Heroes of the Storm is on the steady decline? Heroes of the Storm isn't on the decline. The bubble of competitive teams joining popped because there's not a lot of money in it for now or for 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 profit businesses. But the collegiate level, which is awarding scholarships for students, is just beginning and will continue to steadily grow as well as its casual user base as long as Blizzard continues to fund Heroes of the Dorm. Overwatch, on the other hand, is getting out of hand in a great way. It is the new hot thing in esports that is a breath of fresh air for specifically MOBA players looking for a break from their daily grind. Now, to be fair to the game's League of Legends and Dota, uh, players have been playing the same game for four or more years, and Overwatch is brand new. Overwatch has another six months of exponential growth. Then will continue to grow healthily for another 18 months after that. And now, for the good stuff, the games. In League of Legends EU LCS Summer Split, Fnatic vs. Unicorns of Love. Round 1, Helisang and Veritas hiding in the top lane. Brush get the jump on Yellow Star and Reckles, while Vizashasi TPs in to help finish the Yellow Star kill. Same spot on the map, Gamsu goes bowling and bowls a gank on Vizachasi with help from Spirit. Gamsu and Spirit again pushing on Vizachasi in the top lane, but this time Vizachasi has a tower and minions on his side, so even though he goes down, he takes Spirit with him. In the jungle, Fnatic pushing into Unicorns of Love. Yellow Star catches, move in a bubble. Fabivan dishing out Tides of Blood. Hemoplague, Sanguine Pool slows down Unicorns. Reckles falls. Fabivan takes move. Vizashasi takes Yellow Star. Fabivan falls. Spirit takes Veritas. Then Hilasang falls in this costly exchange. Exile has some cojones as he charges into a tower in Gamsu, but gets overwhelmed when Spirit joins in to take him down. In the top lane, Exile gets a 3-on-1 gank, flashes away, but not fast enough. He dies. Unicorns pushing the bot lane. Reckles takes Exile. Spirit takes Move. Yellow Star takes Vigisasi. Veritas takes Reckles, Yellow Star dies, Veritas falls, and Fnatic keeps their lead in that bloody battle. Fnatic pushing into Unicorn's base through the bot lane. Unicorns of Love's defense and champions melt away as Fnatic takes round one. Round two, heroes in a uh, unicorns in a two plus tower verse three turns four. Veritas and Helisang try to hide under the protection of their tower, but both fall to Fnatic. Reckles and Yellowstar, hungry for some unicorn meat, chase down Helisang and Veritas in the bot lane. In the bottom river, Yellowstar and Reckles chase down Helisang and pick up the quick gank. In the upper river, Fnatic pushes into Unicorns of Love. Exile with the fake out moves north, but flashes south with distortion, trying to run away from the three members of Fnatic. Vizashasi and Veritas reinforce to help him. Yellow Star throwing the tidal wave. Reckles gets taken down. Spirit takes out move. In the mid lane, Fnatic pushing forward slays Vizashasi and Exile, but lose Gamsu in the making. Spirit gets caught in the honey trap and gets ganked by Exile and Move. 
In the jungle, Spirit takes exile. Unicorns retreat back to their base. Fanatic pursues. Unicorns push back once they reach their base and get Fabivan down to almost nothing. But he stays alive, finding safety once he reaches the river. Fanatic swings back around to take the offense, taking Veritas and Move as unicorns retreat after their, their loss. Fanatic and Unicorns of Love meet in the mid lane carefully but with full force. Yellowstar takes out Veritas. Yellowstar throws the tidal wave. Exile and Move get taken out at the same time. Helisang gets flattened under the Fanatic steamroller towards Unicorn's base. And Vizashasi is the last man to go. And once he does, they get the ace. And there's nothing standing between Fanatic and Unicorn's unmanned base. Except for the turret, which they take down. Then another. Then an inhibitor. Both Nexus turrets, then Unicorns of Love's Nexus, giving Fnatic the win for the round and the match against Unicorns of Love. Congratulations, Fnatic, on your win. Now, here are the highlights from Overwatch, Dota, Hearthstone, Counter-Strike, and Mortal Kombat with the musical backing of Brian DiBiagio. As well. They're waiting for the Overwatch Kings to make that play again. He's jumping in, going in deep, trying to go for the kills, and he's getting a double kill, nearly getting the triple kill. Gets eliminated in the end. There's still much for them. We have Kenzie also eliminated, but once more, Cypher goes in, gets the kill against Icefeld. So McCree versus McCree is currently the name of the game. Cool has his own old up and could use it. Winston is on the point. They are trying to contest it right now. Already 34 channel through. Winston with his own old going full monkey here. Going full ape and pushes him oh, down. We're seeing the double Zarya play coming in. And great gravity search already being used. They get the kills in against Anak. And Anox Overwatch is just completely getting obliterated. 97% round two about to be won. Starting by jump in as is. Zarya stunned now. Take it down. Anak already eliminated they're trying to go for a second kill here and again the hits against Winston trying to jump into the back and gets the kill a job well done but has to pay with his life went as well now we're seeing again Cypher trying to make his play he has the dead already not using it just yet the kill again nice shots against Lucio here if he can get the damage and you know, at least get an heroic that would be great but he's still starting to channel it gets the kill against Winston it was an important one a really important one and is trying to channel the point through they're getting it really well done then Another kill and kill after kill coming in for Anox Overwatch. They're able to secure the point and this is the moment. And that is going to be a disaster. If they start to cluster then it's going to be just completely lights out. Jumping in, getting the kills. Yes, the ult and oh my god. They are wrecking them. Look at Anarch here. Making his work. And he has already ult up again. Can use that the once more. The ultimate up. There's already the flower, the kill attempt by Anak not happening. Both McCrees are down on the side of Anox Overwatch. They are in trouble, 90% channeled through, and nearly all of their players just lost their life in that attempt there. Ubla still has his ult up, could use it, can buy a bit more time, can force the opponent behind the corner, trying to do exactly that. There it comes, already trying to go for the kill, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is game as team. Oh, bottom lane, Moon, he's had such a good show in this series. Could be in big trouble here, bottom nose, but Tumba Man has a Sakuchi cooling down. One more auto attack through the trees, gets off the south. Juking, but it's not enough heal. The south gets cancelled. Moon's in a lot of trouble. Matumba Man gets the body block out in front. Jarek continue to pursue. Can they bring him down? He even pops the fairy fire. He's using up all his ammunition just to live in Matumba Man. One more Sakuchi forward. Can Moon make it out? Body block again. He needs a couple the more effects. The Tango as well. Can they kill him? No, he lives. The boys. Still here in spirit as they stun Kuroki top. They're going to use the Sunray to bring that Enchantress low. Not sure if they're going to have enough damage to get the kill, but it revs up. It drops him almost immediately. Bambi could be dinner. Motel just looking for the stun. Good jukes by Kurogi for now, and there's action in the mid lane while this is all happening. He pops to the trees. He heads away. Finally, they will finish him off, but that level one Wraith King on cooldown is a big deal. 260 seconds. Motel won't have the extra life, and just like that, it's gone. Can OG punish? Flame breaks there, pushes them back into an echo stop. Good setup on mind control. Can OG find the follow-up? They roast him. Prime, it's gonna be the Elder Titan and the Wraith King. The bruisers are here. Mind control with the one hero crush. It only catches Miracle, and the fight breaks out in earnest. To the left, they pursue Jerax, who gets chunked down. Easy dealt with by the TA swooping around and then delivering the egg will be flying nobody's focusing it liquid ignoring the egg ignoring the earth splitter just plunging forward it seems like they might build a hold and return fire
here as they do have a disruptor buyback. He'll be in range soon. They bring down the PA. They're looking for more. They've been clipped back. The focus on Crick and they finish him up. The Bear's still chasing. No tail. No tail survives. But he could get kited if he's the last man standing. He still has that reincarnation. Needs to armlet toggle this. Fly also in trouble. That's three dead. It might be four. Fly in the trees. No escape. He's crushed too. And now it's just no tail. Big Daddy glimpsed back. A full wipe. Could be the offing for Liquid as they look to turn this game on its head. Catching out the race gate, focusing him down. He might be a boss, but he is one they can conquer. Liquid with a full five-man wipe off the back of a single buyback, I believe, there on the disruptor. And good positioning here by Kuro. He might reveal this. No, the lasso gets him. They still manage to catch him out. Oh, you poor unfortunate soul. Down again. Mind control. Oh, he blinks in. He wants that room, and he is going to get stunned. He may pay for this. The bear trying to zone them back a bit. A good flame break by Moon. The boss is there. They get the kill. Forced to buy back immediately. Then the purge on the Moon. Can they kill him on the way out? He's the gem bear. That would be a bigger one. OG scrambling the retreat. They want to get out quickly. And No-Tail, he'll engage forward he is there. Up. The big rock has re-entered the space, and they're going to immediately jump in. No-Tail starts it off straight into Kuro. Why must it always be Kuro? But somehow it is. Another crit. Just battering his former teammate. No mercy from Big Daddy. And meanwhile, cleaning up heroes in the rear. They are going to get a kill, but Miracle play pays the price. He gets Jirax. He gives away his life to Fada. Not worth it whatsoever unless he can also get an Atoma Man and no tell. Now Mind Control is in a bit of danger. They're pursuing him. The race speed of no tell in position to get off the stun. The follow up lasso is there. OG closing on another big kill. They actually drag him too far away. No tell's like, let me hit him, damn it. Okay, there you go. Forward. Miracle's tracking down targets. It is Kuro. The stop was really. Oh, actually, does click Kuro as the four step came through. They managed to lock down No Tail right now, but it's just a few swipes from those side blades to bring him down. And the chase goes further. On to Jerex, the Tumper Man running around under BKB, but not killing anyone. Miracle's killing everyone. Two have fallen already, but Tumper Man hasn't had the effect they needed. Any time lapses there and looks to chase for more, but the egg comes out. Crit able to ghost after and walk away the additional arm on these supports, keeping them alive. Not so lucky for the side of Liquid, and now Moon to the top. The lasso comes through. Mom going to be proud. Dream is materializing here on the big stage at Manila. The racks are falling even if they kill no tail one. You got to do it again, and he's not dead yet. Miracle going off to a mega kill. The bear about to grapple pop the BKB, but they beat that Fada. They go step to the point defensively. The bear will fall. The hero's next. OG are doing it. Liquid, they can't withstand the punishment. OG are the Manila major champions. A, a very minor thing, but ultimately significantly impacted the way the turn played out. Yep, so now suddenly that power overwhelming is looking a lot more rosy. But he's going to go ahead and coil first to pick up his card. His hand is still lacking in threats a little bit. That councilman changes that very, very quickly, though. Darkshire councilman, one of the biggest threats in the zoo deck these days. 5-5 five, five into 3-5 through the use of power overwhelming, and he's just going to continue to play for the board here. Uh, this is interesting because he's seen... Um, no Hellfire, no Shadow Flame being used for several turns now. Um, so he might just be able to put his opponent on a Twisting Nether as the only 100% all in on the Forbidden Ritual. Hey, he's in fact not even playing one of his cards. Okay. Pice even has the perfect curve of Demon Wrath, and I think there's a lot of incentive to ensure that you're not you're not priced into playing Reno on a future right. turn. Uh, a lot of players will think that, okay, I want to get the maximum value out of my Reno I gem. like this Rag coming down right now because this Ragnaros, if it ever manages to connect with face, threatens to end the game. Soulfire, the uh, the dog. I like this. And is he going to attack the face with Reno? Yeah, yeah he's I going love ahead. This. If if Ragnaros hits face, the game's over. If Ragnaros is a minion, well, that's really bad for no, you too. On board. So oh. power overwhelming draw. Four plus four, where I come from, Brian makes eight, and that means Tice is going to go up one game to zero in the grand finals here. Ina has me out. Oh, but stay, no but matter yeah. what he's playing around, nothing could help him survive. Leroy Jenkins, who comes down takes game number two, tying up the series for a really bad spot here. And uh, Inner, you know, as he has been doing all day, playing very quickly with a, a very powerful turn. Whirlwind here will gain him a bunch of armor, set up a five-card battle rage. This game is all the
It certainly is. This was the big power turn from Inner. You saw his reaction on the, at the end of the previous turn as he got a good look at which cards he drew. Armorsmith, Armorsmith, Whirlwind, he knew was pretty much guaranteed to lock that game out. And now it looks like he's even going to go ahead and just activate the Freezing Trap so he can start pushing through damage. He wants this game over and done with. We've seen he is a rapid, fast, impatient player. He wants to get this done. He wants the momentum to continue. He's just playing for the... Is he just going to attack? Uh, so Mia puts him up still to have 14. enough damage? Uh, it puts him up to 14 life, so he has 8 from the Lava Burst. Yeah, he, he does. Still I, I briefly, with the hero I briefly power was, well. was, yeah. was terrified. Yeah. But uh, Tice does end up just having the damage to close things out despite the Ice Barrier. And uh, he will even up the series two games to two. Yep, so Tice squares things up again. You know, actually interact with an Ice Block here, which means that Alex Straza is going to come down the other ring class here. Is in hand? but Ice Lances oh, and Frostbolts just keep getting drawn. And uh, this is that single copy of Earth Ring Fast here is not going to be enough to get the job done. Yep. And leads out with the Doomsayer just for the fun of it. Second Doomsayer joins the party. They want to watch the firework display. And here we go. Fireball, Frostbolt, and Ice Lance comes up. The end is, in fact, coming. There we go. Inner after, you know, this, this just being purely a dream to him just a few months ago is now one game. One Asia Drake would still remain on the board. Even if a backstab was picked up, it couldn't do the two damage because the Drake was already damaged. But he sees no better option here. Shiv is picked up. That's not going to do anything better than Phantom Knives in this scenario. So unless backstab is picked up here. Okay, so actually the Shiv burst was sensible because it meant he could have picked up backstab into Phantom Knives. But it's too late. But there's nothing there. Tice is the Europe Spring Champion. He'll be going back to BlizzCon back to back years. Mind, Jenkins wow. knows what's coming now. Sponge finds well in it, and we're seeing a good little shutdown from coming up. Mistake from the Renegade. Somebody to fall back from the connector. Blade looking for a way in. Not going to check the right corner, though. Sponge is going to find a kill, but Sponge. He's done so much more damage. We're back down to 3v3. Look at the flank. He's going to be under the full control of the T's. Whoa, oh, I say that, but shot. damn, with the timing flick, shuts down Waylander. They need to hit these shots, and the Stilo can be a huge problem to Wait, this. He's all Blade. alone at this point. Work his way to, towards a sponge sitting towards CT. Gets the and kill, yeah. He's really work this with a single Molotov to try and hold this, that flash. He's just going to go right for this frag. Dodges the first shot coming out from Yam, but now the Molly from Yam as well. He's going to look for this quickly. He's found it, but then he's going to burn himself live. And that is going to be a big round, I guess, to play off after the fact they didn't actually pick up the pistol. And Oh, there you go. That's a massive shutdown. Blade. Really very quickly. Both of them have kits. No rush in that department. But Char is going to start to leap in and it walks right into the cross if you steal it. out just yet. Yeah. It's peaking that to a slight degree, but yes! it's going to be Markaloff that just walks right up in the apartments and takes down Yam. And not only this, but we're all at it finding a second and a third now for the team in total. Second for him personally, but look at Azur sneaking up. We're all at it says no to that. Shuts down Azur. Let's play that out. He's ticking and Yam is watching the cross. There we go. Takes down one. Shara gone left with two. Both of them do have the orb, but it's going to be Yam doing some heavy lifting here. Markov takes the fight, gets denied. Yam comes. Looks up. like an all in B as well. That's going back to kind of almost basic. Oh my god, Shara, no way. No, no one's checked for the Shara. has been completely let loose here. Flash comes out perfectly. He spots down one. He spots out the plant. Shara doing incredible that smoke, work. That still and he's still Let's see if he can actually get it. You can see JKS crawling around the corner. They're expecting someone to be there. And he gets it anyway. Tries to find the second kill. Markalov did Not find like one. Pick up with the shotgun. Markalov's got two in the shotgun. We're all that it finds a third for the team. And then Shark utilized it. It's a great, pretty safe option to get out of the corner against any character, especially when you have a character like Melina who is so good at breaking armor. Yep, and this is going to be a really good situation. Oh, one more hit, and there it is. He's the alien in the corner, and again, the corner interact. Fox has been so good at using those. At, at timing every single armor has hit Foxy so far. Foxy and just not pressure again. Here we go. Again. Wow, 100% right guesses from Sonic Fox. Jeez. Down, down one into tail. Down one into. And there it is again. Oh, Finally very nice. Armor's through. But still, now Sonic Fox. He's in the corner, sure, but he has two bars of meter to work with. And Foxy actually uncharacteristically dropping a few combos within this set. He needs to tighten up a little bit because, I mean, he's shown that he is consistent with his combos. Nice! nice. There we go, armor of his own. Oh, and no roll anti-air. Nice he's respecting those jumps so much for some reason. And we're at chip damage here. Nice bait! Beautiful! There we go, Hello. Nice. All the way in. Is he going to tie it up? And he is! Fo or Sonic Fox was jumping at Foxy a little bit too much. Foxy was getting so much damage off of that. Right. We're starting to see it again. Oh, this is going to... Oh, oh, use the breaker. 
here. That's risky. Oh! oh! No! Oh, yes! but he lands on it! I don't know anymore! Still a chip on Oh, oh the optic move! Yes! Oh, my God! What a scramble! Tournament point. Oh, and a great win punish with the down four. Wow, that was He's completely so changed far. his play style now. He was going for just spacing with a down four. Yeah, That's all he was doing. He's played so much more of a zoning game this game. This is looking so good for Sonic Fox. Can Foxy pull this off? He does have three does bars. Have X-ray. One more hit could do it. Oh, he baked the armor. One more hit. And that's it. Sonic Fox with the three peak. Well, that's it. We hope you learned and laughed a little, and we will see you next week. Tweak. Tweak. Tweak.